wave, everybody. Everybody wave. There you go. George, can you hear me outside? George is sitting in the car park, so we're going to wave you to. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Brilliant. I can hear you. Hello, um, welcome to uh, Golf Kitchen. Welcome to sunny South End in beautiful Essex. Um, and thank you very much for being here. So I've got Oliver. Thank you. Uh, guitar whiz from Heavy Lungs and George, drummer, Heavy Lungs. Well, we were going to have Danny here, obviously, but Danny's decided he's too famous to join us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's got something better to do. So um, that's all my questions, Buck, for a start. But it's all right. We'll, we, we'll wing it. We'll wing it. We, we can return to the PM. It's fine. I can, I'll ask you all the questions. You just give me a Danny impression all the way through it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, no you can do that. So, thank you very much for being here. Um, first of all, tell me how uh, how I, Ollie, how are you? Where are you? And how's lockdown been? I'm all right, man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm in in my house. I've been um, staying at my girlfriend's house for a while, but I've come back home. Um, just yeah, in, in Bristol, obviously. Um, yeah, lockdown's been. To be honest, it's been all right. But I don't really see it's somewhere. It's, like, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like don't see the fuss. Obviously, there's a lot of horrible stuff going on. But like for my part, I've quite enjoyed being able to play music whenever I want and watch TV whenever I want. And, you know. Are you back at work yet? Yeah, I went back to work today, um, part time. So just sort of catching up on what we kind of left off when we when we sort of went into furlough, really. So it's a bit weird because it's, it's like three months didn't happen, but... So everyone went to the toilet for three months and then come back. Extended yeah. lunch break. Big yeah. lunch break. I, I passed out in the hall. <laughs> what do you uh, do? I, I work at an animation studio. Okay. Yeah, so we do like 3D stuff. We're 3D and 2D stuff. A lot of stuff for like corporate clients, adverts and stuff, but... And then we also do like VR and AR kind of interactive well, stuff. Eyebrow. Eyebrow. Very nice. And George, so explain to everyone why you're outside first, George. You'll be kicked out. Um, well, yeah, I recently moved out into the um, centre of Bristol and my housemate is watching the football and drinking, so he's been really loud and there's no really, not really anywhere I can do this. I've moved into a small flat, so... Yeah, the walls are so you're, on the, you're in the front garden or the back garden? Well, I can show you if you want. This is Go our on. garden. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, yeah. Serious lack of grass on my end. It's quite scenic. It's quite scenic. Thank you very much. So, George, you are you in Bristol too? Yep. Yep. And um, what have you been up to? How's, how's lockdown been for George? Um, been a bit turbulent. Um, I had my heart broken, Brian. What? Ladies? And... Oh, his car. <laughs> um, but I had to move house and I've moved into this lovely flat. Um, it's actually just been like a breath of fresh air in some respects, um, just to sort of not have to do anything. But um, I'm excited to get back to work now with music and everything like that. But um, What do you do for a living, George? I'm a painter and decorator. Way! So painter on my hands at the moment. Proper but, job. Yeah. Family job, job, isn't it? Isn't it? Proper job. Come home dirty. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. So you back work? You you back at work yet, or are you still know? Yeah, I've had a bit of work coming home in the last week, so that's you know kind of getting back into it. But I don't think people. I, I don't. I don't operate on my own, so I don't think a lot of people were like a bit dubious about having work done during the lockdown, and I didn't really want to go to people's houses, so I haven't really been able yeah. to do anything. But yeah, starting to pick up. <laughs> But here we are, and you've got a lovely jacket on for us, which is nice. Thank you very much for that. It's, it's a beautiful jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. So we we're in talk, so heavy lungs. It's been quite a, a roller coaster for you guys over the last um, just, just over three years, I think now. Yeah, yeah. That brand's been kicking off. So I, I've seen you guys live a lot in various places on various stages and tours and tiny little pubs and stuff like that, and I've listened to your stuff a lot. But I, I was thinking today, I don't know that much about you, as in where it all started and how you all got together and all this kind of stuff. So before we start, Ollie, I'm going to give this one to you. Where, describe, if someone's watching this and they've never heard your band before, describe to me what Heavy Lungs are without using the term post-punk. 
Well, that's good. I'm glad you said that actually because it's, <laughs> it's the most. I think it's the most contentious kind of genre name that we have in our bag. It's just it's one of those things like we you know we get but yeah people people come up to us and say oh you you guys sound like this or you yeah. guys are really post punk and we're like really are we? Um, but yeah, I would say that we're just the 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 genesis of the band came from largely this kind of like group effort of wanting to play loud music and we all listened to a band called Gogs. I remember I showed everyone this, this band which is one of Ty Seagull's bands and I was like this is like so in your face but, but so well done and just sounds like over time so perfectly that that was the kind of catalyst for us to kind of make slightly or, or angrier music or more aggressive music because it just felt more important and more like a, it felt more of an energy to be to kind of push something rather than kind of sit on the fence so the idea was to just be as forward and as like maybe as abrasive it depends how you if you think of it as abrasive yeah. but you know that was the goal so yeah I don't really know other than that I mean George do you know <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was a. I think it was a sort of a. For me, anyway, it was that I'd come out of another band, um, about Grey Hooks, which sort of died spectacularly, which I won't get into. But um, and I was sort of like roaming around, not having anything to do, and then uh, picked up by Danny, who wanted me to play, and then that's how I met Ollie and James, and then yeah, like Ollie said, um, like um, similar taste in wanting to just play. Um, that style of music, I think. And the- so I was going to ask actually how you all met, and were you in previous bands? So you mentioned that band there. This is a band you was in for some time. Yeah, it must have been about four or five years in Bristol. Um, yeah, it was a it was a big project for me in my life. We released an album, and then that's about when the classically that's about when the when the band died <laughs> when we went, when we released our debut, which I'm hoping is not going to happen to Heavy Love. I feel like I might be cursed, but you know, you never. Know. <laughs> And Oli, you, you played music before, as in, in other bands? Yeah, yeah, I've played music for in all sorts of bands since I was about 12. Oh, wow. um, so just play, I, I, basically, early days, I was lucky to be, to have a brother that was older and played lots of music and actually wanted me to play music with him. Um, largely because there was a kind of lack of, of like-minded people that wanted to play music sort of properly rather than just play in a pub and get pissed. And um, so yeah, then I was in various bands, and um, I was in a two-piece band for quite a while, and that's actually how I met Idols, which is about ten years ago or something. Yeah. Um, and we sort of they sort of approached me and said, "Oh, our mate told us uh, you were in this band that our mate told us about." Blah, blah, blah. And then they invited us to come play in Bristol, and then they supported us in the Golden Line, which is famous pub in Bristol really and um and then yeah like then I moved to Bristol initially really oh, I moved to Bristol for you but it wasn't it was more like because I get like a student loan yeah and I, I can just start a band and like funnily enough like I played a little bit of music when I was at uni like I played a, me and Talbot started a little side side project type thing and then I just never really did it because I didn't have much time. I didn't expect to have be so busy with uni and stuff. And then right at the end of the uni, of uni, because I met Danny when I first went to uni, and we were just sort of mates for a bit. And and then right at the end of uni, he just sort of said, um, do you, "You know, do you want to do you want to do this properly? Do you want to do a band?" Because we talked about it before, but it was never never that serious. And then he said, "Oh, I've got these other guys." To do it. A first practice met George and James, and then we got. I think we got three songs in our first practice, pretty much. So James had played music before. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, he's he played in a lot of ska bands and like really? that kind of thing. Yeah, which is funny, really, because it's, um, you know, quite widely different, obviously, than what we play now. But yeah, it does. Yeah. There are moments where I, I can hear it in his bass playing, which is quite cool, actually. I like. I'm going to listen to that now. That's good stuff. And Danny, is this Danny's first vocal job? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he was in a band at uni, but I think he just played bass. I can't remember if he sang. Okay. 
Um, and then, but otherwise, that was it. Like, we had, before moving to, he said about, yeah, a few times that before moving to Bristol, uh, before moving to Bournemouth from Ukraine, he'd only really listened to 50 Cent and whatever was on the charts kind of thing. <laughs> and then got introduced to kind of more rock music, that kind of stuff, and then was quite obsessed with it. And yeah, just sort of. So this first rehearsal, do you remember that much? How, how, how did that go? I do remember it. I remember we were at a studio called Pirate Studios in Bristol, which is in like Lawrence Hill. And it's like, it's, it's um, I don't know if you know Pirate Studios, it's like a chain and it's like unmanned. So they, you book it online, they give you a code and you just sort of rock up at a time and then you can go in. So it was a bit weird. Like, w you know, we'd sort of all met that, just that type, that, you know, within five minutes, we were like in a room, like sort of setting up and being like eyeing each other up, like, <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's start playing. And then Danny had some bass lines. Um, and then we just sort of went from there. I can't remember if we'd listened to them beforehand, maybe. He probably sent them beforehand. And then we just sort of started playing. And then we kind of got, I, th I remember it was at that practice. We kind of, it, it had a spark. So it was kind of like we started playing and it was going well. So it was it was obvious to all of us that like okay this actually works it's not this isn't horrible, and then I think I mentioned Gogs that I'd been listening to a lot which was relatively new at the time, I think we listened to it off my phone or something and we were like oh yeah and then just that energy came across without even really knowing the songs and then went from there and then we, I think we had that practice and then we were like oh we'll do a gig then in six weeks or something. <laughs> I was gonna start, <laughs> you remember that how was it pretty pretty soon after. From you first getting together to that first gig? Yeah, I think it was six weeks. I think, fuck. Do you remember it, we, George? Yeah, I remember, I remember thinking how ambitious it was <laughs> to play a gig in such close proximity to having started the band. Because for me, like, um, with music, um, it's always like, I, I always kind of want to get, you kind of want to get bulletproof before you even sort of reveal yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and so that in case you just go out there and you die on your ass. So it was also like, um, I remember feeling like, all right, fuck it, we're going to do this. Let's, let's fucking let's do it. But yeah. I do remember that energy and I remember that, uh, that sort of like nervous energy when you're first thinking you're going to play a gig in a few weeks. But I mean, I think, I think it went well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, main, the, main reason we, the main reason we played it was because Danny used to book gigs quite a lot for, you know, small venue gigs. And he booked this night with, um, they weren't even bands really. They were like sort of DJ type people. Um, and but like quite heavy industrial stuff. And he was just like, shall I just put us on the bill? And like, we'll just do a half an hour set or something, a 25 minute set. And then we just went, yeah, I, I think that was kind of a good way to do it because obviously we told all our mates to come, whatever else, but like, it wasn't our gig. It wasn't like the pressure was a little bit off. Yeah, we weren't we weren't headlining a gig or anything like that. It was a case of like we're going to play this gig, and then see how it goes. Going. This was the uh, end of 2017, I think, if I remember rightly. It was June June 2017. Okay, summer summer 2017. I remember the photographs. Yeah. I think I I think Beavers and, and Dev turned up and stuff like that. I remember there was there were scenes on that dance floor. I, I've seen the pictures. It looked yeah, like yeah. quite. Well, that's the thing. It was really. Bit, I remember it being really really hot, really busy. So we're all a bit like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> and uh, just yeah, I, I remember it being pr going pretty well. I remember going to the pub afterwards, uh, and everyone just kind of being like, "What the fuck? That was your first gig?" And uh, and, we're, and we were kind of like, "Yeah, do, do you like it?" And they're like, "Yeah." So that was cool. And then and then we didn't do a gig. We we decided at that point, I think, to just. I think, do you remember, George, we were like, oh, no, we need to record before we do more, loads of gigs. Yeah, I think that was we, the consensus was to do that. Yeah. To get, to get a body of something together so that people could reference it and decide whether they actually wanted to come to the show. <laughs> yeah. So we, I think we... Go, go on, just, so abstract, abstract thoughts came out uh, the following year, 2018. Yeah, but it was actually what? recorded. It was recorded about... A month, maybe it was like August, so it was like maybe two months after that first gig. Fuck, so where did you, where did these songs come from? So, like, yeah, mainly, um, they, 
the bass lines originally started. I don't know about all of them. I can't remember. I can't think what songs are on it. But some of the some of them started from Danny's little like home recording thing, and then we just fleshed it out and then got it recorded. Recorded it in three days or something, and then and then and then our second gig was. Uh, I saw it was either the exchange or it was simple things. I can't remember. What is the what is the writing process like, George? When you sit there, do you know when that song is coming together? Is that just done yeah. rehearsed? Well, I think well the writing process has evolved a little bit. It did start off with us all together, sort of in a in a in a room, um, which is which is sort of the long way round of writing, just all together, sort of four of us bouncing ideas off of each other um yeah. and if something doesn't stick then we let it go if something does stick then we keep with it um but recently i think just i mean because of the lockdown as well we've been sort of um recording things independently me and james have been recording things separately and it's evolved a lot differently from them but back in back when we started it was just very raw someone would have a bass line or you know guitar lick or i'd be like this drum beat and then we'd all sort of at, at, in the same time just come up with something um, so the songs changed a lot, actually. They they changed. We had like different versions of different of songs, like loads of different versions of them. Yeah. And then you know they just they yeah. just evolved from there. We were quite quick fire though, because we like that. Like nowadays, we're a bit more like I don't know. We're a bit more conscious about like how, how you know how we want a song to progress or something. Whereas back then it was like what much more quick fire to think. Do you think, do you think that's yeah. because? You know the stuff you release right now. You know there's an audience out there that's gonna to want to listen to it from day one. Whereas that earlier stuff yeah. you were recording, you didn't know whether there was an audience there for it as yet. Yeah, I guess so. Did that make yeah. a difference? I think it. I think it definitely did. It definitely has done in certain songs and certain bits since. Um, but initially, yeah, it was definitely a case of. I don't know. It was almost like we didn't have anything to prove but we just wanted to do it and that was it yeah and we just did it and it kind of came out so uh 2018 um what was 2018 was the year you supported idols was that 18 or 19 that was 18 that was yeah 18. so that was the end of 20 yeah that was the that was the joy tour it was yeah it was the joy tour so that was yeah. like late late on so that's fucking that's yeah. like literally 12 months after you got together as a band that's quite a big stage to go to. Yeah. And was, yeah. was that nervous? Would you get nervous at all? Uh, I was nervous, I think, you... because, of, because of obviously the opportunity. You were like, we can't let this opportunity go because it's amazing. Yeah. But also at the same time, you're like, this is a little bit scary because it's almost like being invited onto like, you know, do a live radio show and being like, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be doing this. Not, not to, you know, maybe having like sort of a slight sense of imposter syndrome and just being like, yeah. maybe, maybe this is, you don't know what's real in a sense. You sort of like, we should, I don't even know if we should be doing this at all. I don't know if we're ready. Um, Cause it could have gone, you know, it could have gone to shit. We could have yeah. really fucked it up. And you also, we also took quite a lot of risk actually, because that, that tour, we were like, oh, let's play some new songs. And, yeah. and, and then, but then, about two, maybe two, three shows in, we were like, fuck that, that's just, then it's not working, let's get, let's tighten the setup to so so exactly yeah. what we're doing. And then fr from that point, it was like, I feel like it was pretty plain sailing from that point. How many days? How many do you remember? Uh, about two weeks, something like yeah. eight days. It was the whole days. of the UK, the UK Lego tour you did, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Probably about 11 shows or something like that. Okay. And some big venues as well. Some, some big venues in that. In yeah. that. Especially that, that Bristol yeah. show must have been quite something for you. Because that's your home yeah. ground and that was big. That was weird because that was the first show, which was a bit unfortunate because, and it, it was, I mean, the Idols guys said the same thing. Was just like, you don't really want your hometown show the first show because you want to let loose and have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not be like, not worrying about the next day and, you know, everything else. So it was a bit tricky because it was really fun. I remember, I remember enjoying it, but it was a bit of a, like, a bit of a kind of thought of, oh, uh, well, because also we had, we had that, and then we had a day off, and then we had London. So we had, like, <laughs> the, the, two, the two biggest shows, really, for the tour, right at the start, was a bit, 
was a bit annoying, really, because like London for me was probably my favourite show of the tour. Maybe even one of the best things of it. Uh, what was the venue? Remind me of the venue. What was it? The the Forum in Kentish Town. Of course, yeah. And like, because I, I, you know, I'm being being from London myself originally, it felt almost almost just as much as a hometown show to play there. I remember seeing the Dead Brother there when I was sort of sixteen and just being like, we well, love the venue. And then to play there was just like, that was, that was amazing. Really good. I remember, I going, like, Go on, going George. Back, sorry, going back to what you said earlier about like, uh, honing the set, like saying like Bristol and London were right, they should have been at the end of the tour for us because <laughs> they were like the biggest shows. And then I remember the London show, we overran by like 15 minutes on the support <laughs> set. And like, <laughs> and we were like, oh shit. Yeah. This isn't even a gig. And um, I remember like, yeah, I remember feeling like a little bit like we'd honed the set to more towards the end, like Oxford. We were like, we were on top of it all, but it was such a much smaller, um, much smaller crowd. But still, yeah. yeah, it was an amazing show. I remember standing next to Mark Bent at the Bristol show. And Mark Bent was telling me how he signed you. As part on, on his team, and I said, Well, you, you, you like him, they're, they're a good life back. He went, I don't know, I've never seen him yet. And then he walked off to watch you. I love yeah. the idea, I love the idea. He had all that faith in you before he'd even seen your line. I told, Yeah, Wait. I remember that. I remember that. And he, and he sort of, I remember I saw him before the show, and he was like, You know, very normal, sort of like, Yeah, good luck, good show. Yeah, and afterwards, he was like, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. So, I was yeah. going to ask Danny this question because Danny's that, that not here, so I'm going to throw it to you. Get your perspective on it. Obviously, this was the Joy Tour, and the Danny and Adelco single is on that album. This that kind of put Danny himself, and it is a question I want to ask him one day, into the the, the, the limelight. Really, more his yeah. name than him as well. Did was did did you did he find that a challenge, and did you find that a challenge as a band, or was it was it a massive help early early on? I'd say a bit of both, personally. I think because um, I think I mean you've got the challenge of the fact of um, you know someone kind of it almost feels like it overwrites what we do sometimes. You know, it's like you know you know I, I remember initially when we started playing gigs just after that. I think it, I remember it in Brighton when we played on that tour and everyone was doing that and the crowd at Danny and it just felt a bit like a slight dismissal of yeah. what we were and it was more like they were just looking at him to be like that's the guy from that video yeah um but then quickly it sort of but then it gave but at the same time gave us this leg up and it was like really amazing to have this platform to suddenly do what we want in a way and, and people, then, are, the people are going to see you because obviously danny's in the band and the idols connection and stuff like that there but i wonder whether it did whether it's frustrating for Danny that he he wants to be, he wants to be Danny the, the Delco the lead singer of Heavy Lungs rather yeah. than that folklore hero that the Idols sung about on the album. Uh, yeah, I do think he liked it though. I think he's enjoyed it. Mm, yeah, I've seen, I've seen it in his face when it comes <laughs> on uh, watching in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's looking around to see if anyone's noticed him. But <laughs> is he very? <laughs> He's grown. He's grown. In, he's grown into it though, because he's like. I think he's now like. I think he now understands the that people genuinely when they don't. You know, you get a certain amount of people that are kind of just like, oh, wait, wait, and that's it. But then there's other people that are like, you know, they really, really want to speak to him and really want to like know know who he is and stuff and like. Yeah. But because of this. You know, not not necessarily just because he's the, the the name in a song. It's just because people have have listened to the message of that song and kind of gone, oh yeah, you know, the whole the whole thing of him being this positive side of immigration and stuff like that. People actually embrace that now, and I think he knows how to embrace it too, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a it's, it's a really nice thing, you know. It is. So, um, twenty nineteen, straight to CD released your next EP, that was released on Bally Records. I think that was the first one on Bally? Uh, yeah, other than the, the, other than the, the single. The single from single. that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Did, what difference, because obviously the, the, your previous EPs and stuff like that have all been self-funded, just all done yourself, all independently. 
what difference did it make, George, bringing Bally in? Um, for me, it was like, obviously, um, you know, Joe and Marco carry a lot of weight with their presence um, in Bally. And it just almost, I think for us, it felt, um, it felt like a step in the right direction. Like we were, you know, we finally had a team behind us that believed in us. And, you know, like people that were actually ready to invest their name and their money and their time into our yeah. music, which is something yeah. that, um, you know, we haven't, well, I personally haven't had before um, to that extent. Um, and it was, a, it was a beautifully hum, humbling moment to think that someone was willing to do that. Yeah. to release our music and it felt it felt really good yeah it was a lot of organization that you know would have would have probably you know been a lot a lot harder for us if we hadn't had that team behind us you know lucy and marco are like you know they work as hard as anyone else i've ever met yeah. I think. even harder and um you know what they do for for us and everyone else they work with is just like amazing and um, it just really, it gave us confidence as well, I think, because when we did the first EP, it was kind of like, oh, this is fun. You know, let's put it out. Cool. And then when we started doing more stuff, it was like, oh, we kind of need a little bit more guidance in terms of, I remember like being completely wrong about certain ways of uh, releasing stuff. Like, oh, we should just put it out. We should just do this. But it's like, no, no, you should actually have more videos and you should have more like time it better and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So like their, their guidance on that was like, it's like having that extra so, pair of eyes, that independent pair of eyes from someone else who's not directly involved. Like, yeah. Make, make a big difference. So 2020 turned up. Um, how many gigs did you do before lockdown this year? I'd say in 2020, we had a, we had a small run in, in January. I remember. Can't really remember. Uh, you remember things better than I do. Well, we did. We played a gig at. Well, we played a gig at the Old Last, like on the. We did Butlins. We did Butlins, which was great. Like I loved that. And we did. We did. Uh, we played another one in London. I think we played another show. I can't think. It's just. It's all kind of. So what? What? Uh, what hasn't happened in 2020? Now over these last four months, what? What was planned and that, that didn't happen? You must have had a year ahead all written out. Yeah, a lot of shows. A lot of yeah. shows have been pushed. Um, pushed like, I think before lockdown was even considered, we were we were like, you know, twenty twenty is like ramping up. We've got all these shows of like a majority of them. I think um, were abroad, um, hmm. and it was looking to be our probably our busiest year um, to date. I mean, we've only had three, but. Um, yeah, it was looking. It was looking to be pretty promising, and then to have that all sort of slide out of view a little bit was a little bit like um, disheartening. But also, yeah, because we had like a, we had a Scandinavian tour in. It was supposed to be in March. I think it was April. Was it March or May? April, and then we were supposed to be. We were supposed to do download festival. Oh, really? Yeah. We were supposed to play in Moscow. Well, we we're supposed to Moscow on like. Something like that. This, this is supposed yeah. to do like quite a lot of just you know smaller shows in like, Holland, like festivals in Holland and Belgium, and um, yeah. So the whole thing, obviously, is now next year. I would say yeah. I'll, be, I'll be amazed if anything happens at all this year. Yeah, uh, my, I think my next gig booked in is Butlins again. I don't even think Butlins is going to happen. I think January seemed to too soon for me that's my logic on it anyway so yeah do you um obviously you've not been together rehearsing as a as a band for the last four months but george mentioned there you've been working on music and stuff like that how do you do you think this will change the, the sound of your band when you finally get back into that room because i only say that because the last dp especially with the track birthday I, it was a, it was a lot heavier that track for me the the riffs on that were fucking beautiful well done ollie but it, it was I I you can hear I can hear from first DP to that last first track on first DP to the last track on the last one there is a progression there I th I think so anyway do you think when you get back in that rehearsal studio in whenever that's going to be do you think it will change again it'll evolve again 
Do you have any idea what it's going to sound like? When you to start? be honest, well, right, okay. I, actually, we, we did actually go into the studio on Sunday. Um, so oh, we really? had done, but it was only James, James couldn't make it because he was um, working. But um, yeah, it was actually, <laughs> it was actually probably the heaviest thing we've ever written. Funny enough. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, there is a chance it could just get heavier, but it will, but it will progress a hundred percent. That's, um, my, I mean, personally, my goal is always to progress whatever it is, even if it progresses to something that doesn't seem like a progression in terms of like being futuristic or something, it's still a progression from our. Yeah. Sound. It's too easy. There's too many bands for me that just play that safe all the time. They find that sound. And it's and it sells a few and sells a few tickets and all this kind of stuff and but it gets very very boring yeah. very quickly. Um, but I can hear that for me when I listen to lungs early lungs say early it's only fucking three years ago, isn't it? But it's um it's there's there's a difference there and it's, it's lovely to hear as well. And the and one of your stage shows have got your performance at Butlins was was fabulous. You 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 can see that you've grown and you've come into it the conference there and stuff like that. Um, especially you, George, kind of go a bit mad sometimes behind that kit. It's lovely to see, mate. <laughs> you're like you're like the vocal one as well. You're the one hidden in the back that introduced all the songs. It's a bit weird, but I like it. There might be a complex there. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe <laughs> it's because I'm the drummer sat at the back. But I don't. I, feel, I think I feel when I'm on stage in that sense, it's more like I've taken off a mask. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got your you got your way you act. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyday life. When you get on stage, it's actually, it seems like the purest version of yourself. It's um, a performance. You, I mean, it's a performance, and that's what it needs to be, doesn't it? There's nothing worse than yeah. going to see a band that just stare at the floor, and it's fucking yeah. dull as shit, isn't it? And I think it's one of the reasons why your band are very entertaining to watch, and Danny's a very entertaining frontman to watch. It's one of the reasons why I think idols have been as successful as they are, because independently, that you could just focus on one of those guys for the entire show, and it's enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when a, when a, when you go and watch a band that just like doesn't look like they give a shit, what, why should you give a shit yourself? You yeah. create a divide between the audience and yourself, which which shouldn't really be there when you do that. And when you've got a band like Idols, like you're saying, you feel like you can connect with individually with their with their energy. And I think yeah. Yeah. I like when I'm sat behind the kit. I mean, there's a whole drum kit in front of me, and there's a stage. But you like to be able to like straight to the audience, be like. How's it going? Do you know what I mean? We're all we're all here together in in, in the yeah. same room. Yeah, I feel, I feel like some sometimes I'm I'm oddly like the opposite. So I'm like the loudest in the band, but the most quiet vocally or something. Because I just feel like sometimes I can't I can't be that loud. My guitar can't be that loud, and I can't like shout and like <laughs> that's just too much. <laughs> I can't be like that much of a you know limelight hogger or whatever. But well, yeah. I've got one more question before you move on to the quick fire. So we, I do it. I don't know if you've seen any of these at all, but I've got there's a quick fire round at the end. So you've got about 15 quick fire questions coming up. So there's, there's like a no thinking thing as well. Um, there is one other little person joining us in a minute, but I've got one other last question for you. What has been your highlight so far in the last three years, your heavy lungs highlight? Because you've had a few. I was tour. Um, KXP was a particularly great night, I remember. Yeah. Um, buttons, for fuck's sake. What's been, what's been your highlight, George? Um, highlight for me, I think there's a, there's a lot. There's a, there's a lot of like main moments. Obviously, playing with idols and stuff and, and touring around with them was incredible. But uh, for me, I think coming back, to, coming back to our hometown and playing in Fekla in, and, and you know, selling out a venue in your hometown that I've, you've lived there for 10 years and I've gone to that venue to see so many bands and to sell that out and to have that vibe from the audience and to see all my mates and, and people I don't know there come to watch us was, yeah. was overwhelming. That was, for me, I think, one of the highlights of our, of our career. Yeah, that gig was just... It had that kind of, you know, like I've heard people use the term, like, feeling like you're going to levitate when you play a gig, and it kind of almost had that feeling of, like, there was so much energy in that room that it felt like it could lift you up. It was pretty cool. Um, who supported you that night? Was that the night that Fraud supported you? No, that was Milo's Planes. Okay. Yeah, Milo's Planes. Who I've yet to see. I've heard fucking good things about. Uh, to be honest, that was one of the reasons it was such a good gig. Because I watched them and I was like, fuck. It was, it was like... It was like watching an amazing band and then being like, oh, shit, we've got to play a show as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, yeah, the, the, that's the perfect gig, is 
is because I remember stood just next to Big Jeff in the audience watching Milo's Planes thinking, fucking hell, we've got to go on next half. Yeah. Um, well, that, <laughs> well, that's going to that, right. keep on your toes, though, to fucking have to, yeah. to, have to follow stood, something that's stood, that good. Next to Big Jeff in the audience watching Milo. Oh, Connie, this is Connie, <laughs> though. Connie, Connie, hey, Connie? Connie, can you hear us, Connie? Hello, Earth to Connie. <laughs> That's all gone right, it's up. She's on another fucking world. So, quick fire now. So, this quick fire is quite strange, because I've got questions here, basically. One one for Danny, one for Ollie, one for Joel. Danny's not here, right? So, so you might end up with a double question now. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm going to run through it. So... Oli, first question to you. No thinking, straight off the top of your head. Favourite Idols track? Uh, oh, um... Stendhal Syndrome. That's a nice one. Yeah. First one that said that as well. George, favourite Idols track? Oh, fuck. Um, I didn't think you were going to ask me the same question. <laughs> um, Colossus. It is, it is huge. Oli, Oasis or Blur? Blur. Wrong answer, mate. But I'll, I'll take that it's, one. It is a, an answer, isn't it? It is an answer, yeah. George, this question comes from your fan group. And I can't remember who asked it, but the question was, George, what does your front room smell like? Uh, pine needles. Fair enough. That's that sounds lie. very middle, middle class and lovely. I was yeah. going to say piss. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ollie, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Um... Oh, probably like a, a, what's it, a woodlouse. Why? I was just when I was a kid. They look, they look <laughs> kind of, they're, they're like a, quite a juicy insect, aren't they? No. Uh, George, complete the sentence. When I dance, I look like a... Twat. Nice, nice. Um, Ollie, superpower. Uh, flying. Oh, Come fly. on! Put him in Uncle Tony to a fly. That's good. George, um, what celebrity do you not like the most? Which celebrity bug bugs the fuck out of you? Um, well. I've I haven't done lockdown, I've been working, so I've missed loads of telly. Uh George, um what really, really gets on your nerves? Um politicians. Just generally. Just all of them. Ollie. I hate them. Oh, Burn, good. Them Burn it down. Burn it down. Ollie, Burn what's it. your favourite no, UK venue? UK venue? Um, yeah. The Louisiana, Bristol. Nice. George, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Strangest thing I've ever eaten? Um, my own vomit. Oh, for fuck's sake. No, that was not intentional though, was it? There's a no. There's a video. I didn't. I did intend to eat it, and I'm actually ashamed that it exists on the internet. But it's there, and you can look for it. I'm not going to tell you what it's called. And, and you know, you're not ashamed enough to fucking tell everyone it's out there. <laughs> I think that we have a hard time finding it. Ollie, Marmite, yes or no? Um, no. Fuck. Sorry. I like. I like Marmite. I like Marmite crisps and stuff like that. I like flavoured things that are Marmite, but I don't like Marmite itself. It, it's well, it, but the only, generally, about 80% of people have gone, yeah. You're the only third person that said no. Just straight off. Nah. I think I go on tour with you. I feel like bitumen. That's what bitumen tastes like. Oh. You know tarmac? So that's yeah. what I, think, I feel like that's what it tastes like. Tarmac what tastes like really? Marmite. Burning yeah. hot bitumen. <laughs> yeah. I reckon that's <laughs> on toast. Yeah, I'm not into it. I'm not into crisps. It. He's all right with bitumen crisps, but not the fucking toast. Yeah. George, uh, what if you were a pair of shoes, George? What pair of shoes would you be? Doctor Martins. Hey, well done, Ollie. Early mornings or late at night? Early mornings. 
uh, George, sleep with mods or, or fish finger sandwiches? Fish finger sandwiches. All the way, all the way. Holly, who's the worst snorer in the band? Um, well, we stay in the same room, so if you say me, I'll, I'll eat you. Forever. Yeah, I've, well, I've never, I don't know. I don't think anyone really does snore. It, it might be me. I don't think anyone does snore, really. <laughs> yeah, it's you. Really? Probably, oh, it probably is me, yeah. <laughs> George, what's your favourite cartoon? Cartoon? Yeah. Uh, Adventure Time. Well done. Ollie, favourite insect? Um, the caterpillar out of Bugs Life. <laughs> On toast. You know that green one? That's, <laughs> he's great. <laughs> Uh, um, George, what's your superpower? Superpower? I thought yeah, about man. this a lot. It would cool. be um, tele. It would be telekinesis. Okay. You do a lot with that. You can manipulate a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your look? Is that the look you're gonna do? It's gonna work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you can't give it away, can you? <laughs> 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 what's George doing? He's doing his thing again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you <laughs> fucking telekinesis again, is it? <laughs> Don't look at him, he's fucking having you. <laughs> um, Ollie, what's your most favourite album of all time? Um, oh, fuck. Uh, Raw Power, Iggy Pop. Wait, Iggy the Studios. Nice. George, summer or winter? Oh, uh, summer. Ollie, brutalism, hate... brutalism or joy? Brutalism. George, Marmite, yes or no? Fucking A. All the way. Um... Ollie, what's the, who's the greatest guitarist in the world? What, alive? Yeah. Who's your idol? Your your guitarist idol? Um, uh, John Dwyer. George, what's your favourite album of all time? Favourite album of all time has got to be Songs for the Deaf by Queens of the Stone Age. Um, Ollie. Last question. I'm going, to, I'm going to try and bring Connie back in after this. If it all goes tick tits up, we're never going to talk to Connie again. Ollie, describe yourself in three words. Uh, um, tall, um, anxious and debonair. No. George, <laughs> describe yourself in three words. <laughs> um, shouldn't be allowed okay Ollie describe George in three words for me uh, <laughs> um, sweat shorts and clap <laughs> <laughs> and George repay the favour uh, describe <laughs> Ollie for me in three words um <laughs> Grumpy type bastard. Hey, hey. hey fuck you, mate. Got you. <laughs> well, can you hear me one. now? Ollie, uh, Connie, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Hey. Oh, fine, fine. You've, Honestly, you, of, you gave everyone a migraine. This is, <laughs> this is why I can't have nice things because I just do this. <laughs> I'm not very good with technology, um, despite working in marketing. Um, yeah, I so don't know everyone, what happened. <laughs> everyone, this is this is Connie Matthews. Connie Matthews is um, a, a heavy lung super fan. That's how I'm going to describe you tonight. Um, I want that every, on my gravestone. How many how many how many heavy lungs gigs have you been to, Connie? Um, I think it might be thirty nine. Wow. That's more than George. That's more right. than I've been. Yeah. Yeah, more, I think more, more than I feel like we've done. Balls, Brian. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. As you've asked it, you're in there. So I want to make. I want to make it forty because I feel like thirty nine is a bit of a rubbish number. So. Well, we're not done. We're not done yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, but <laughs> Miss okay. Rona's around, isn't she? So. Yeah. So yeah, the Miley Cyrus. She's still hanging in the air. She's a little bitch. <laughs> um, Connie, I bought Connie and Connie's got a question for both of you. So, uh, Connie, have you got a question for Oliver? Um, well, they're kind of just like general ones. Okay. Um, yeah, basically this one is because one of my favorite memories of Heavy Lungs was when I went up to Camden and watched them play at Doc Martin's 
and then we ended up going to see Crazy Town afterwards. Um, and it was one of those things where like, I never thought I'd see that band live. Um, so I was just wondering if there are any other weird bands that you guys have seen live um, and what was the reason behind it? Um, wow. I feel like I'm a, I'm a, oh, I, <laughs> I mean, it's not quite, I saw a, uh, a Donna Summer tribute act in a tent on a village green with about 10 people, which is, I'd, you know, I'd quite like that. Was it, it was just, yeah. it was just really fucking weird, but that was quite funny. Um, oh, who else have I seen that's weird? Um, I mean, it was pretty weird. I saw Morrissey. That's not very nice, is it? That's not weird. That's not very nice, though. I saw McGlastonby and I was just like, uh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not comment from me. It's just a weird place for him to play when, like, you know, there's nice people there. Um, oh, I can't think of else. I once played a gig. I you seen any weird jokes? Yeah, I once played a show with this with this band, and they were really arsy with us, and they were like being like overly professional, and they were like. You guys have got to get your shit out of the venue. You guys are fucking taking up our time. But they were all dressed like head to toe in like realistic badger outfits. And I can't remember what they're called. I'll have to do some research and find out who they were. But I just remember laughing at them because they were shouting at me like, get your fucking kit out of here. And I was like, you were dressed as a fucking badger, mate. So <laughs> give me a break. Uh, I once played a show with, weirdly enough, I played a show with Eliza Doolittle years ago. Okay. Which is kind Pretty of, cool. it was cool, but it was like, what, why am I here? It's got a weird, very weird support slot. That like was just, you know, we, uh, the band at the time was in no way anything like her stuff. That, so that was kind of odd. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> We've got another one, Connie. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be hopefully playing my first ever gig soon. Well, when, when we're allowed to. Um, and I was just hoping you would have some advice for post gig nerves <laughs> because yeah, I don't really know how to deal with that. Yeah, no pre gig. That's the one. Pre -gig. Pre -gig. <laughs> I was going to say post gig. Yeah. You just go. Home. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. My, my advice is have one, um, small, but very strong drink. Don't overdo it. And secondly, prepare to shit cause you will shit. You will always shit if you're nervous before well, a show. Yeah, anxiety you'll, you'll, shit. Yeah. You'll shit. You'll shit or you'll be sick. Usually okay. 20 seconds before you've got to go on stage, you'll have to have a shit and everyone will be like, where are you? <laughs> you'll be like, just getting the nerves out. Okay. But other than that, believe in yourself. Yeah, you you'll shit do. or you'll yeah. be sick, but probably not both. So <laughs> it's very, it's, well, There's been two, two Idols gigs that I went to back in the Brooklyn tour where they where they were late on, well, Joe was late on stage, and he walked on stage and went, sorry, I'm late, I was having a poo. Twice <laughs> that's happened. So yeah. I, remember, I remember at the bath gig, um, I think it was the bath gig, and Joe was wearing all white, and he told the whole audience that he had the shit. Yes. And I was just like, why are you wearing white? That is just awful. Like, it's just going to be so obvious to everyone if you shit yourself. <laughs> yeah. I remember Bowen. Joe no, doesn't Bowen. censor himself. Bowen shat himself. Um, <laughs> I don't know why we're saying this, but I'll say it. <laughs> they, they played at um, the Fleece. Um, I think it was with Mets, I think. And Bowen drove from London, so he was a bit late, but he was like stuck in traffic. And he arrived and he was desperate for the toilet. And he, went, and he sort of ran off back to the toilet. And then we were just sort of like standing around, moving gear around. And Andy S was there and he said, he just got his phone out and he got a text from Bowen saying, oh, shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> he, had a, he had a fart in the urinal and shat himself. I feel <laughs> like that's going to be me at my first gig. <laughs> it, it wouldn't uh, surprise you me. <laughs> you won't because... Don't wear white. Don't yeah, wear don't... white. <laughs> and just... No white jeans, okay. No I would tip. say also, oh, the other, another tip, don't eat. Um, your, your window before gig should be, no, don't eat any heavy meals. Uh, no longer than three hours before. Okay. Yeah. 
So if you if you do that, you should be fine. Because if we well, we've made this error so many times, if a burger well, or something. When we went to the old blue last, and we went to that American diner, and we ate like <laughs> fucking massive burgers and chips and milkshake about forty five minutes before we went on stage. Literally yeah. think oh, I was gonna like it run was, out of breath. It, 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 it was here. It was, I did the gig and it was there. I was like, Respect. I could, I could. Oh, horrendous. So, yeah. so don't, so don't eat loads and don't shit yourself, Connie. How's that? Uh, awesome. Yeah. Great. Great advice. And also, don't and don't worry. Okay. <laughs> don't worry because these two will be right down the front, going, come on, entertain me. Yeah, go. And, you shit yourself yet? Yeah? <laughs> oh, you know. Can you want that? <laughs> that would not help at all. Brilliant. <laughs> Connie, have you got one last question for us before we say goodbye to everyone? Yeah, so obviously I've seen Heavy Longs quite a few times um, and I was just wondering what bands you guys have seen um, more than once and which bands they are. Um, Donna Summer, Tribute Act. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did the whole tour in the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, seen, I've seen the OCs like four times. I've seen I've seen Richard Ashcroft about four times, from from the age of about thirteen or something. Um, but other than that, I can't think of many that I've been to loads of. Yeah, what are you doing? For me, it's uh, King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard. I think I've seen them like ten times. I saw them twice in one day at Glastonbury, and I just I, their live shows are just incredible. It's something that just I just can't stop watching them. <laughs> Nice. So, yeah. My other one is um, Bon Jovi. <laughs> well, you've seen Bon Jovi. I've seen them like nine times. Fucking what? hell! <laughs> what's your favourite? What's your favourite Bon Jovi track? Uh, I actually don't know. Um, don't know um, any Bon Jovi. <laughs> no, I, I only know "Live Long a Prayer." <laughs> I spoke to when I interviewed Lee. Um, I asked him about Bon Jovi because he's a big Bon Jovi fan. Often wears Bon Jovi t-shirts. Never yeah. seen Bon Jovi live. Yeah, he's a poser. Slacking, he's slacking, yeah, mate. He's, yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I, he probably doesn't even like him. He put just pulls. <laughs> yeah. So listen, I'm going to say goodbye now. We've been on, we've been chatting for about an hour. So <laughs> I thank you everyone for your time. Thank you very much, George. You, I hope you're not too cold sitting out here in the car park. <laughs> thank um, you, Brian. Thanks for having thank me. Very much. Yeah. And, uh, thank you for getting dressed up. Thank you very much, Ollie. Um, and your new blonde hair is beautiful. So, and it's lovely to see your faces again. Uh, give my love to uh, to James and, and Danny when Danny can pull himself away from whatever it was that was far more important than this. Yeah, of course. Um, and Connie, thank you very much <laughs> for killing our ears for five minutes, and yeah. then finally turn out and give us fun. <laughs> thank you very yeah. much. I'm going to wave now, and then that's where Lindsay knows we're all done. So, thank you very much, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.